Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about touring around Italy. This past December, I had the opportunity to tour around Italy. I grabbed a few friends and we decided to visit several destinations that we hadn't seen before. My friend Kelly lives in Germany and since I was visiting my daughter Katie there, we decided to start there. Candy just moved to Italy and she would join us in Milan and we would begin from the north. None of us had been to Lago di Maggiore or Lake Maggiore, Montepulciano or Vincenza. We also wanted to visit our friends in Piemonte who we hadn't seen since COVID started. So here's how we did it and how you can too. with Wendy Channel. I love connecting and interviewing small business owners around the globe. I like to share reviews and hit the trails hiking. Thanks for joining me today because it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. I like to travel and stay at unique B&Bs or boutique hotels, sometimes apartments because I feel more like a local. So I've included where we stayed, some good eats, wine information, shopping, and more. Here's a travel tip you need to know before you go if you're traveling by car. Whether you fly into Switzerland or Munich, you'll need a vignette for your car. Vignettes are a country toll charge. You'll need to purchase this in advance and place it in the front window prior to driving through the border crossing. If you're renting a car, be sure to tell the rental car company they may add the vignette to your rental. It's about 40 Swiss francs or 45 euros. We needed one for Austria as well, and the Austrian vignettes can be purchased at gas stations prior to crossing a border. You'll definitely want to do this before crossing over. I've included some of the links in the description below. So let's begin the itinerary. Our first stop was Lago di Maggiore or Lake Maggiore in the town of Verbania. Lake Maggiore was quite a surprise for me. I've been to Bellagio and Lake Como quite a bit and I've toured Verena and Menagio with my small groups and they're both stunning. It's everything George Clooney says and more. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of Lake Garda. I've explored this lake from the north in Limon Sulgarda to the south, Desenzano and Sirmione. Italy's lakes are astounding and they're sandwiched between the Alps and they're really green in the summer, but they still have their snow caps. They were cut out by glaciers between 47 and 15,000 years ago, and today they bring tourism, commerce, and industry to the area. They're unforgettable and breathtaking. To find out more about traveling through Italy and Europe, check out my latest blog and vlog. It's called European Travel Tips 2022. So first up, let's talk about the cool digs we stayed in and the accommodations in Verbania. I'm staying here in Lake Maggiore at the cutest boutique hotel called Hotel Casa Camilla. It is a family-run hotel and I'm going to take you on a little tour of this once uh, knight who protected the Knights of the Cross who protected crossings across Lake Maggiore. So come on with me. I'm going to go for a little tour. Ciao! <laughs> so I'm here with Ivan Albertella. Bravissimo! Oh, grazie mille! <laughs> and tell me a little bit about the uh, little boutique hotel you have here. Yeah, we started it uh, in 2019. Mm -hmm. But we was a bit unlucky okay. about, about COVID. But, <laughs> but so 
it's not just a work for us. Yeah. It's just a sort of mission, mm -hmm. and you have to, to love it. And the passion is the first thing. Okay. I think we will do it. And we're going to take a tour right now of uh, the hotel and our room, and come with us. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie mille. Thank you. All of the rooms in this hotel are named after family members, women, Vittoria. Isn't that cool? Jamma. This is our room, great sized bed, lovely little terrace where we could see the mountains and the lake. This is just off the main promenade of town, and we were within walking distance of the old town, the harbor, the cool architecture, shops, and restaurants. Ivan hooked us up with dinner reservations at Ristorante La Lateria. It was super delicioso and close to our accommodations. We enjoyed some puntarelli, which is chicory, with fried cheese and anchovies. Puntarelli was grilled and sautéed in olive oil and served with a fried mozzarella ball. In keeping with my vegetarian attempts while traveling, I also enjoyed some four cheese gnocchi and Kelly had some pasta with ragu. We had a lovely, lovely night. Here's another travel tip. Before you arrive at your destination or hotel or Airbnb, etc., ask questions of your host. Where should we eat? Would you mind making reservations? Take the stress out of your planning and ask for help ahead of time. After picking up candy, we made our way to Piemonte. This stop in Piemonte was going to be a reunion. After almost two years of COVID, we were all ready to see our friends again. Calamandrana is where I stay when I am anywhere near Asti or the Alba region. I must visit and stay with Denise and David who own the B&B K Piazzi. I have brought possibly a dozen small groups and families to stay with my sweet Piemontese friends. One stay here and you'll understand why I love them so much. They are true culinary talents and greet you with a wonderful breakfast and have quaint decor in their rooms that remind you of staying in a true Italian casa. Calamandrana is also near Canelli in Piemonte, which is home to my favorite Italian wine, the Rustic Barbera. The Barbera wines in this region have the DOC or DOCG designation. It is also protected by UNESCO. And if you're interested in taking a wine tour of the Piemonte region, let me know by commenting below or sending me an email at wendy at travelwithwendy.net. After our great visit in Piemonte, some wine tasting, lots of hugs, and a few tears, we loaded up the car with some wine and made our way to Tuscany. Andy, Kelly, and I have explored Tuscany quite a bit, but we've never been to Montepulciano. The girls and I immediately fell in love with Montepulciano, and I chose accommodations because they were located right in the heart of the city, and the apartment's description was translated as the Count's Tower. We were right next to the St. Augustino Church. So this is our balcony from our apartment, La Torre del Conte, and this is our morning view. Good morning, Tuscany, from Montepulciano. Cute, adorable little patio. Oop! <laughs> little patio. Our third floor apartment was huge. It included a fireplace, a full kitchen, two huge bedrooms with sleeping capabilities for up to eight. We woke to amazing views and church bells at 7 a.m. Sitting area. And then we've already stayed a night. Here is 
is our lovely living room. Kitchen area, completely stocked with everything that you'll need if you decide to cook while you're in Multipuchiano, see? So, kitchen, beautiful, wine, and a lovely view of Toscana. And the sunsets were amazing as well. Thankfully, all the shops were open and store owners were happy to see us too. When touring and shopping, we remembered to carry our masks. The stores required them and they also wore their masks as well. A few shops we enjoyed in Multipucciano was the Romeria Mazetta. These were copper makers that had been doing copper works of art for 150 years in their family. And he was also good friends with Rick Steve, so you know travel friends. <laughs> there was also an art gallery that was amazing, Fenestre Toscani, and I was able to bring home a few treasures from there as well. The main streets of Montepulciano all lead to the Piazza Grande. They're not just lined with shops and restaurants, but also enotecas or vinotecas, which is for wine tastings, and we found several that we really enjoyed. Kelly is tasting You're the like everyday wine. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. I think you will. Okay. okay. This or one. IGT, uh, irrepeatable, mm -hmm. means not repeatable because each year is different. Ah. We take only the best uh, part of the wine year each year. This one is 2016 and okay. is Sangiovese and Petit Verdot. I like 2016. Malvasia, Grechetto and Verdello. Three different kinds of uh, wine. Montepulciano wine is all made within the local region, and these Tuscans are passionate about education and the history of its wine. If you're fascinated with growing, harvesting, production, and viniculture, you need to stop at the Enolitica del Consorcio del Vino Nobile. This amazing facility sits atop the ruins of the ancient fortress of Montepulciano. You can enjoy their crystal floor, and you can taste every wine of the region for a small fee. Explain to me how you do this. You get a card and then you press the button. Press the button after the card's been inserted over here. It says wine please. And you get to pay for the portion that you want, which says $3.50 and $9.50. And you can also enjoy panoramic views of the Temple of San Biagio and the Val di Chiana and the Val di Orcia. The Val di Chiana. This is the other view that you were talking about. Yep. The Val de Orsia or whatever. Yep. And it's then, really famous. This is the other side. This yep. is the Val de Beautiful. Another day was coming to an end as we watched the Christmas lights come on and remind us of the celebration season. Montepulciano was magnificent and we look forward to a longer stay in the future. Ciao Montepulciano and buongiorno Vincenza. I know this area well because I brought several groups to Verona and to Venice. However, on our journey to Vincenza, I got us a little lost, which I usually always do just a little bit. E70 just turns me around. I call it the V vortex. Verona, Venice, Vincenza, they all sound alike. Anyway, we did arrive in Vincenza, but we arrived starving. What are you guys drinking? <laughs> Blue wine! Blue vin brule, vin brule. <laughs> in, vin, in, in Vincenza. In Vincenza. Mini mini, and it's got cherries. Oh, it's That's delicious. It's yeah. Really if only I had food in my stomach, I would join you. Luckily, our apartment was located right in the heart of the city near a Christmas market. Yay! Ha, 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 ha.
We arrived later in the afternoon in Vincenza, so we walked around the town, we grabbed a bite to eat, explored, did a little shopping, and then we hit the hay, and we thought about all the great times we had on this Italian adventure. This trip to Italy is coming to an end. We started in Lake Maggiore, and we made our way to Piemonte, and then Montepulciano, and Vincenza, and now we're heading back to Germany. So I hope you've enjoyed being on this trip with me, and remember to like, follow, and subscribe. All the best, ciao.